chase. Though I wish there were other bombs that go up around here. I told you it was a mistake to go with it alongside the men. What a stupid thing. What a deluge. You may be a flatlander, but you could be of some use, yes. Sneak up skin. behind Gratilda and stick a dagger in her skull, would you? Worth the rummaging. I was really hoping to find something better. Step aside, pig face. And what business is that of yours, pig face? You ain't no son of the old mother, or even a mountain rat like the brothers of y'all. The old mother's tried our fates immaculate of every make and shape, ain't you? I don't pretend to understand, but I do trust in her judgment. What do you want to know then? Something the conduits ask for directly, you see? There's a key inside, a key to a source temple within the forest. The very temple the conduits attempted to crack at this very moment. They say the key's the only way in. But she's attempted to charm her way in while we look for the key here. Without the wizard servants to show us the way in, though, it don't seem like we'll ever get through the damn doors. Can't say myself what exactly is inside, but the conduit seems ready to turn heaven and ground to get inside. It seems the wizard who lived here was quite familiar with the place. He kept what seems to be the only key, after all. Gratilda seems to believe they're in a hidden cellar somewhere. But we haven't found a lick of a hint as to where the damn thing might be. They can't have escaped. That's all we know for certain. Shame the wizard's pretty little grapevines and beehives are with her without his team of helpers tending them. Perhaps, once we find and skin the buggers, that priestess can turn them into undead workers fast enough to save the garden. And whip up some wine and mead. <laughs> ah! And this big green hunk of rock. Oh. Where are you staring at? Talk to Captain if you need to know. Ah, this big green hunk of rock. All right, man, who's next? Why don't you go yourself then? You already sent Ogle in and he's been blown to bits. You dare to challenge your commander, were Billy? He's no commander of ours, Orc scum. That's enough out of lawyer. Of a solution that's fair for all. Rock, paper, scissors. Who the bloody hell uses a child's game to decide matters of life and death? Ready in three, two, one. Hey, scissors! mind to worry about, so who's next? My eyes on the prize. Not even worth the rummaging.
small graph indicates a spot in the garden deserving your attention. You're reasonably certain he's not pointing out the pumpkins. Soak to the skin! This boulder looks strange, unreal. I'd never have feel anything some the wizard servants they were. And the great queen goon of the orcs thinks they'll know how to get inside the wizard's house. Even if they don't, I suppose she hopes to cut them down, same as the rest of their kin. By the wings of Freyo Fuldon, I bet my left ear there ain't no celery. You there! Any cellars popping out the woodwork in your watch? Bleeding orcs having the first idea what they're doing. They're the same where you're from. Hey, you already said to me, The orcs tore through this place like wild pigs. There's nothing to find in this bleeding dump. I need to unlock this somehow. The thing won't budge. Then again, I thought the same Where about that villager's kneecap. peasants get to? I feel like I've just had a long bath in a cold lake. Who are you? Stay away from my family. They know nothing of the wizard. Take me. A source hunter? Lodian, the gods have answered our prayers. I can think of no more welcome deliverer from this predicament than one of your esteemed order. Seven bless us, and you too. Aye, we three labored under Zandalor's employ. He was right decent to us, and it's thanks to him we managed to escape the brutes upstairs. Zandalor prepared this hidden place long ago. It's almost as though he knew, somehow, that this day would come. Or perhaps he knew only that the forces of evil would always pursue those of goodness and light. Many years ago, he told us that if ever we found ourselves in danger, we should flee to this cellar. Shut fast its door, he said, and mark the jam with a chalk pentangle. This will call forth the magic I have assigned for your protection. It seems our friend was true to his word. Zandalore is a brilliant man, even among wizards. Why he chose to settle in this sleepy little town, I can't say. But then again, he never did remain for long. Always dashing off to attend to some matter or other, our wizard. We cared for his home while he was away, and attended to him when he was in. We were quite fond of him. 
And I do believe he was rather fond of us, too. It seems that when we triggered this cellar's defenses, he knew straight away. Within a minute or so, a strange orb of light appeared before us. It grew sharper and sharper about the edges. I held out my hands to grasp it, and it fell, heavy as a pearl, in my hands. From the orb came Zandalore's voice, clear and strong as though he were standing just before me. His voice was hurried, strained in a way I'd never heard before. Something unthinkable, that he was travelling through the Phantom Forest, that heart of horrors, and into the ancient source temple that rests within its cursed depths. He told us to wait for the White Witch, asked us to deliver a message, something important by the sound of it. We wrote it down, word for word, and will pass it along whenever it is she comes. I know little more than its name implies, but if a Temple of Source does indeed rest within that blighted forest, a greater evil I cannot imagine. Many is the year since ghoul or beast has ventured out of the defiled sanctuary of those woods, yet still we of the village dare not enter. Legend says that to set a single foot into the Phantom Forest is to invite death's grasp. It's a legend none wish to test. As you may know, this town was founded as the last bulwark against the source monstrosities that reside within that terrible place. After the fall of Bracchus Rex, the defeated darkness retreated to those woods, and haunted they have remained ever since. Believe me, Source Hunter, the last thing I'd want to do is disparage you, but this message is simply too important to hand over to a recent acquaintance. Perhaps if you had some proof of your association, we might feel better handing it over. Not much to see here, I'm afraid, but you're welcome to take a look around. I hope your quest fares well, dear hunter. What's the word, Source Hunter? So that's her plan. She intends to summon Astarte and the Void Dragon and overwhelm the Goddess with an unstoppable army. With Astarte gone, there will be nothing to stop the Void from consuming all of Rivalon. Our mission is greater than us, greater than Leandra, Source Hunter. It is a quest to save all of existence from eternal blackness. Her plan must not succeed. Sister, sister, what have you done? Why? It seems you're more than caught up, aren't you? You've already got the spell and the blood, both of which will need, if the spell is to be believed, to slice through Leandra's army of Death Knights. Remarkable. That means we've only to find Zandalo now. Long ago, when Source was banished, a league of great men and women promised to protect its secrets. The Keepers of the Source, they called themselves. Our wizard, is its last living member. That night in the King Crab Inn, Leandro was after something that only he knew. Find him, and you'll learn where to find her. He lives in Hunter's Edge, a village east of Lukula. 
When last I saw him, he was in a panic about Leandra's betrayal. It's possible that he'll have flown Hunter's Edge. You may need to investigate to find a hint of his whereabouts. That's a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Take this ring. It will mark you as my ally. If you should find Xandalore, he'll know I sent you. You're two steps ahead of my sister, Source Hunter. That spell you've crafted will render her army utterly vulnerable. She'll not be able to hide behind Tenebrium and dark magic for long. Aye, aye, Captain. I cannot condone the terrible things she's done, but I can seek to understand them. With our soul forge in such tatters, I believe Leandra is adrift in the not at all inconsiderable sorrows of our lives. What's more, I sense a terrible force bearing down upon the bond between us. It is hungry, and it consumes ever more of Leandra's mind and soul. I cannot say exactly what this force might be, but I'm certain it's both driving me. If I could only repair the forge, I'm certain she'd put a stop to this madness. Kinds of wonders stashed inside. <sighs> There is magic to this place, isn't there? Here, isn't no it? matter how oh, forlorn it seems. There is magic, but it is not so much forlorn as it is dormant. I trust the Source Hunters and their... Friend, how can we help you? That ring! Hikara's blessing! Sandalore has the same. I'd recognize it anywhere. So the White Witch sent you, did she? I should have known she'd not sit idly by while the world turned topsy-turvy. Sandalore's message is as such. He's gone to the Source Temple in the Phantom Forest, and he wants her, or, or I suppose you, her messengers, to follow him there. In order to enter the forest, you'll need an amulet. He stored it in a small chest near his personal waypoint. Once you're inside the forest, you'll need to find the forest spirit. This spirit will give you the rune you need to enter the Source Temple. But first things first, if you want to get inside Zandalore's house, you'll need to use the portal in this very room. I've the crystal you need in order to activate it. Still, entering the house will be the least of your worries. Zandalor himself has called forth every manner of protection to discourage would-be intruders, and you will have to defeat them all in order to reach the bedroom. Now, the last thing he said doesn't make much sense to an outsider. Perhaps you or the witch will manage to make better sense of it. He said, and I quote, She is coming. I only hope I can reach the temple first. If she finds the portal... <sighs> he didn't finish after that. Before you go, perhaps we might impose on you, well, a favor, you see. Source Hunter, we need a way out of this place. It's only a matter of time before the savages upstairs find us, and trying to leave through the village is as good as suicide. But Zandalor has his own means of travel, a waypoint shrine in his own chambers reserved for his personal use. If we could only get there, we'd be able to flee this place lickety-split! The only trouble is what I've already mentioned. The wizard's house is rigged from top to bottom. If you'll be disabling its defenses, we'll slip through without problem. Good luck, Source Hunter, and unimaginable thanks from me and mine. Where am I? Am I? Is this real? I... I feel as though I've been living in a dream. I was bathing myself, as I've done a million times over, when suddenly a curious sensation came over me, as if my mind were no longer mine. I saw, but I did not see. I was as one possessed. How very strange to see a friendly face in these dark times. Strange, but welcome. Oh, that dear fellow. He had a great many friends and acquaintances, from local witches to mighty spirits. 
His dining room was always full of conversations of every conceivable topic, and it was a pleasure to listen in. But he had been somewhat despondent these past few years, ever since return from an extended visit to Lakula Forest. His long face and nervous eyes were new features to his typically sunny disposition. We never did learn the source of his discomfort, but I always kept him in my prayers. A cat told you. I don't know much about source hunters, but I never knew them to be, well, cat whisperers or any such thing. Nevertheless, I suppose I've seen stranger things around a wizard's table. If what you say is true, it must be Jinxica to whom you spoke. How wonderful to hear she lives. I feared she'd been lost to the orcs or the wilds, but it seems our kind Kitty has been helping us all this time. We called for old Jinxy before going into hiding, but this little stray here was the only one who showed up. I figured better to save one little whiskered friend than none. Make yourself at home for the present. We haven't much to offer, but my wife can tell you plenty about the wizard. He's a good and decent man, our Sander-law. Without him, we'd have been ripped apart and tossed aside by the marauders outside this cellar. My wife can tell you more, if it's more you wish to know.